Well, matter, matter is different. Different types of matter are different and have different characteristics and properties. So when we say, you know, a property, those are the characteristics that distinguish one substance from another. And we're going to divide properties into categories, too. We've got physical properties and chemical properties. So a physical property is um, a characteristic of a substance that you can observe or that the substance displays without changing its composition. So like the characteristic odor of gasoline. It gives off an odor, we smell it, the process of observing that does not cause the gasoline to change into something else. Other properties that are physical are taste, color, appearance, melting point, boiling point, density. These are physical properties of a substance. My computer bag is black. It demonstrating its blackness does not cause it to change into something else. Chemical properties, though, when you observe a chemical property, you're actually observing the substance change into something else. So gasoline is flammable, right? It will ignite. The flammability of gasoline is a chemical property because for it to demonstrate that property, it gets burned up and it's not gasoline anymore. Things like corrosiveness, acidity, toxicity. We'll see that chemical properties are very intimately associated with chemical changes, changes in the actual matter. So physical properties, the, the composition of the substance doesn't change. So here we have water boiling. And we've drawn um, illustrations of the molecules in here. In liquid water, the water molecules look like little Mickey Mouse heads. As we boil the water and it goes into the gas state, those molecules don't change. It's like when I dismiss class and you guys go from the solid state very briefly through the liquid state and out the door into the gas state. Are you still the same person that you were when you were sitting in here? Yeah, you are. You have not changed into a different person. You have not become a zombie or anything like that, right? In the process of a physical change or observing a physical property, the particles stay the same. Um, in chemical properties, that's not the case. So iron will rust, right? Iron will rust. That's a chemical property. When we demonstrate the property that iron rusts, the iron atoms in this nail, which were originally just all iron atoms, when they rust, they become combined with oxygen to form iron oxide, which is called rust. The properties of rust are very different than the properties of iron. Iron is strong. It's shiny. Um, you can pound an iron nail into a piece of wood. You could form a nail out of rust, but could you pound it into a piece of wood? No, it doesn't have the structural integrity. It's flaky and it comes apart. It's a different color. It has changed. When iron rusts, it changes into something else. So iron rusting is a chemical property. <coughs> identify each of these as a physical or a chemical property. So the explosiveness of hydrogen gas, chemical. When hydrogen explodes, it becomes something else. The bronze color of copper, that's a physical property. You can observe that without changing what the copper is. The shiny appearance of silver, physical. The ability of dry ice to sublime. Subliming means to change from a solid directly to a vapor. I'm hearing chemical and physical. So how is subliming different from water boiling? It's just changing its physical state, right? 
So subliming would be you students going from sitting here to directly flying out the door without going through the liquid state. Does that change the particles? No. If the particles don't change, is it chemical or physical? It's physical. So if we have a state change, even if you skip a state, but if you change from one state to another, we're talking liquid, solid, and gas, it's a physical property. Water boiling at 100 degrees is a physical property of water. So dry ice subliming is a physical property 